Vincent, Kale Beverly, sorry to call you so late. Uh, just a busy day, but call me back. Um, I'm ready to talk with you about the discussion. I'm here. Oh, there he is. <laughs> All right, I, I stepped out the back of the house <laughs> just when you called. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, I had bad timing. How you doing, man? All right, so you got me on speakerphone and I got you on speakerphone, huh? Yeah, yeah, I am actually got it posted live. Like I said, I put posted live on uh, on YouTube this way because this topic is something that pe uh, you know people have questions about so they can listen in, chime in if they want, stuff like that. So I'm actually on YouTube, huh? Yeah. I didn't want to be on YouTube. I thought I was calling you privately. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I asked if you want. Uh, that's what I said. Let's talk live on YouTube. So you don't want to be on YouTube? No, because I, I think my second response was, what's the purpose of YouTube? And you never explained that to me. That's what I'm explaining. What's the of us discussing it on YouTube? Oh yeah, I thought I did. Well, the reason why YouTube is because we were you, we started on YouTube. You commented on one of my YouTube videos, so to keep our dialogue public, just like if we were to comment publicly on YouTube, I'm saying instead of just texting, let's talk publicly and keep it on YouTube. Um, that yeah. because there's many people that follow these videos and want to learn what you have to say, so you can reach your audience the, that way, and I can reach my audience that way, and people can decide from themselves yeah, what they want to yeah. believe. I don't have an audience. You you have an audience. You have a YouTube channel, and that's that's what was concerning to me that you have a YouTube channel. Why and is that concerning? What well, what was concerning to me? How you attacked that that the man? I, I believe this may have been over a year ago. Mm -hmm. Where because what well, what had had struck me when 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 it I think the the uh, description of the video was something about, uh, I think you, you guys are going back and forth about repentance, you know, that, that, you know, talking about whether repentance is required for salvation. And, and that, that, that interests me because normally I, I do look at your videos and I admire your, you know, the way, you know, you're out and out and about and representing the body of Christ and how you are spreading the gospel. I, I, but it just kind of concerned me that when somebody came along and, you know, was just as rambunctious and, you know, fervent about his belief and everything like that, it was somewhat you were looking to find what, you know what he believed was incorrect and then you kind of like charged in at him you know like saying okay well that that's not right and and it, it just kind of concerned me that we as christians and i can understand us having disagreements on foundational issues who the godhead is who christ is you know, and, and the mode of salvation and everything like that, that that's concerns that I, I think that we should all be in agreement on. But as far as whether we repent or not, whether that, you know, leads, because I'm, I'm, you know, I, I think I had put on there Second Corinthians chapter 7. Did you get a chance to, to skim through that? Yeah, I'm going to pull that up. Um... So then that way we can go over it and uh, everybody can see what it says. Um, but I have to address this first. You mentioned how I preach. Uh, thank you for watching the videos. I appreciate that. And that's why I post them to just encourage others to go out and do their ministry. Uh, the disclaimer is I'm human just like you are. I may not always have the best approach or even say it the best way. So if you can do it better than me, I encourage you to do that. And then post your video so others can see and be encouraged and do but that. Actually, I, I don't have all the equipment that you have. I'm a retired person that is on disability, so I don't have the, the access to the, those type of finances right now. Well, everyone has a cell phone, and every cell phone, for the most part, has a camera. So it's... Yeah, it's well, 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 we're I'm, supposed I'm to... be not yeah. into that, so... Well, I just like to I watch videos and yeah. learn from what people are doing. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I do. Exactly. Well, the Bible calls us all to preach the word and then preach it not just to your local community, but to all the world. So 
what's the best way to do that than the internet. That's the why what, reason why I do that. And this is what uh, Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy 4, says, I charge thee, therefore, so thee is including us, the church. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, that's us, and the dead. So we will be judged at his appearing. We're judged at his appearing and the dead at his kingdom. Verse 2 says, preach the word. So we are all supposed to be preachers. Every believer is supposed to be a preacher of the word. Preach the word. Be instant. That's why I'm always instant. So the second you emailed me, I said, let's talk. I wasn't ready at that time, but hey, I got on the phone with you to, you know, a few minutes later. Be instant in season, out of season. So it doesn't matter. There's no reason why we shouldn't be preaching the gospel. Reprove. That's how we're supposed to preach. Reprove. And that's what you see me doing is I'm reproving. Rebuke. I'm supposed to rebuke. And that's what I do. And I exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. If you see me talking to these people, I'm talking for a long time and I'm preaching uh, from the scripture. And so this is what hey, that, this is what, what I do. That's what I uh, brought out to you. So I, I, you said there was nowhere in the New Testament where it talks about uh, repentance that worketh to salvation. And then you wrote back and told me that, th that he was writing to people that were saved. Why should he have to write that to people that were saved? Okay, so now let's go to 2 Corinthians 7, what's in question. So I want right. to, yeah, so you always have to read in context. So if you read the, right. yeah, so if you read verse 1, it says, right. chapter, that's what I did. Perfect, perfect. So if, if you read in context, uh, ver chapter 6, before it even gets to chapter 7, you know who he's talking to. He says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? So he's talking to believers. He's not talking to unbelievers. All right? And then you go to, then you go to, uh, where am I? So, so then that, that kind of, you know, kind of squashing what you're talking about because it's talking about he he's telling believers to have godly sorrow. Yes. 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 Repentance. Yes. To salvation, not to be repented of. Yes. But the sorrow of the, but the sorrow of the world, which Judas had when he, you know, when he Jesus. betrayed Jesus, he had. Ju really Judas. Sorrow. So he was yes. distinguishing between godly sorrow that worketh repentance to salvation and worldly sorrow which worketh to death, which Judas did when he went out and hung himself. Yeah. So in 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 Second Corinthians so, seven so, one. So you kind of you kind of prove with my point because he's talking about repentance to save folk. Exactly. So in Second Corinthians 7, 1, it says, having therefore these promises, so we have the promises. So when you have the promises, you're already saved and sealed. Dearly beloved, he's talking to the believer, the already sealed, already saved, already believed. So repentance happens after you believe, not before. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. So we're talking about the flesh. Let me make my point. Let, and let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting now, now, holiness why, why, in the fear of God. If we're, if we're saved, why, why would he be exhorting us to cleanse ourselves from, from the filthiness of the flesh? It, yeah. It, it, why? Because our flesh is filthy. It's nothing, nothing but wickedness and sin in our flesh. That's what Paul talked about in Romans 7. Okay. Let, me, let me ask you these two questions, because this is what I always ask everyone. If you've seen my videos, I need to see what ground we're on. Do you know for sure if you're going to heaven when you die? Yes. All right. And then the second question is, why should God let you into heaven? Because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and that, that I should be saved, and that's what I've done. That's what you've done? Okay. So do you believe that Jesus uh, is God Almighty? Yes. Can you lose your salvation in any way? No. All right. So do you believe that you have to repent of your sins to be saved? I believe that in order for you to have a good relationship with your God, your Father, if I do sin, 
I feel that it's, it would be appropriate for me to ask God, yes, I, I slipped at that time. I'm going to, I'm going to do better. So yes, I'm, I will be sorry because that's what repent means to be sorry. Yes, I'm going to be sorry because there's four different definitions of repent. All of it doesn't mean mind change because that's why I went back to uh, Numbers 23 where you brought that up where, you know, you're talking about God repenting. There's, there's a scripture in there where it says God is not man and he, that, that he should repent. And you just said God repented. So that's a, a contradiction. No. But what you have to do no, we'll is look at realize that, that every time you see the word repent, it does not mean change from sin because God is not a sinner. So when it says God repented, it doesn't mean that God changed from from sin or had his mind changed from sin. It may mean at one point that he was sorry for what he did, for what he thought to do to the Israelites. No. So yes, I <laughs> repent because I'm sorry that I disappointed my God and my father that I that I want to please him because of the great gift of grace that he's given me. Okay. Because I love him so deeply and uh, I don't deserve what he gave me. So oh. I'm appreciative every day. Uh-huh. And All I, right. I'm going I'm, to, I want to bear fruit. All right. So if I'm not bearing fruit, it, 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 it's disappointing to me, but I don't go out and say, well, God doesn't love me any less or anything like that because I know that I'm secure by grace. I'm secure in my salvation. Yes, okay. I, I have that assurance. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, so you, so what I'm saying is, must I do to be saved? Is it repent or believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? It's, it's uh, and I think I wrote that to you. I said it, I said it's both because you can't you can't take away one from the other because in points of of the scripture it talks about repentance, godly sorrow that work of repentance to salvation. It says that. Okay. What does that mean? Yeah. Thank you. Let me answer that. If you would listen, man, you do a lot of talking. Now it's time for me to listen. I, it's time oh, for no, me to no, talk. This is a dialogue. This is not a monologue. See, now you're doing to me what you did. See, I'm, I didn't get on the phone and argue with you. This shouldn't be going to back and forth because therefore you're trying to teach me and you just said in your scripture, I have the Holy Spirit, so no man do I have to... to I, the, the Holy Spirit teaches me. So man, no man is going to get on my phone and teach me what I already know. So... Uh, well, you, we're, we're, Can we're, you at least uh, let me talk instead of cutting me off? Right. No, because this is a dialogue. I was speaking, and then you speak. It's not a monologue. I know. I, I, I know. I know. You were speaking, and I'm saying, can I speak and now? Then, you, then you, you raise it up, and now I'm getting irritated because I, I was. I thought this was going to be a cordial conversation because just because I disagree with your point of view doesn't mean that we are enemies. We can agree to disagree. All right. Can I talk now? That, that's that's what adults do. Now you're behaving like an adolescent, so I think I'm a little bit older than you. So uh, is it is it okay if I talk though? Adults, don't don't try to don't try to teach me the Bible because I know the Bible. Okay, is it okay if I talk now? Yeah, you can talk. All right, so please don't interrupt me. I'm going to teach. That's what I do. I'm I preach. Interrupt you? I'm interrupting you now because you keep telling me that I'm interrupting. I won't interrupt you. Thank you. Please don't interrupt me. All right. So what I was saying in Second <laughs> Corinthians seven one that irritates me, man. I'm about to hang up on you. That's fine. Well, Why do you have to say that again? Because that there is confrontation. Okay. Nonetheless, I lowered your volume. If you want to hang up, go right ahead. So this verse in Second Corinthians seven one it says, "Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit where this is all about a cleansing this is not about salvation of the soul this is cleansing of the uh, filthiness of the flesh so when you read it in context these are already saved believers so now that you understand what he's talking about then when you read it down in 7 9 and 7 10 it says now i rejoice not that ye were made sorry. I remember, and this is the second letter to the Corinthians. In the first Corinthians, he 
he talked about, let me just read, let me just read it because I don't want to rush through it. I want you to see what he's saying. It says, receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. I speak not this to condemnation, uh, I'm sorry, to condemn you. For I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. Great is my boldness of speech towards you. Great is my glory of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. For when we were uh, uh, come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled and on every side. Without uh, were fightings, within were fears. Nevertheless, God that comforted th those that are cast down comforted us by the coming of Titus and not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he hath comforted in you. When he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, remember he risked that they would mourn in 1 Corinthians 5? Look at, read that chapter. So this is the second Corinthians, the second letter. Your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice no, uh, the more. For though I made you sorry with a letter, so he's talking about 1 Corinthians when he scolded them for the sin that they were living in. For though I made you sorry with the letter, I do not repent. So he does not repent of making them sorry with a letter. Though I did repent, for I perceive that the same epistle have made you sorry, though it were but for a season. So this epistle, the word of God, should make you sorry. And this is the word of God is only written to believers. That's what it's talking about. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. What did they have? What did they have to change? They had to change their ways. These were believers, because if they continued in that sin, they would die. For ye were made sorrow after a godly manner, not worldly manner. These were saved people. This is not talking about salvation. This is talking about relationship. That ye might receive damage by us in nothing. How could they receive damage? Well, hey, <laughs> the worst damage, the wages of sin is death. For godly sorrow work of repentance to what? Salvation. Salvation of the body. Now, it's not talking about of the soul because they're already saved. Not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world work of death. See, so death. We're talking about life and death here on this earth. Say? Oh, really? Okay, thanks. Here's my audio. Can you hear me now? Oh, were you watching it? <laughs> the devil doesn't want this to get out, boy. He's trying to stop my audio and everything. Thanks for calling in. Let me know. Is my audio working? Let's see. Let's see. Smart. Yeah, I can hear it. I can hear it. So it's working. All right. Thanks. All right. So, yeah, the point here is that he's saying for godly saw work of repentance to salvation. This is talking about of the flesh, because if you go back to first Corinthians five, he's telling you right here. He said it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such fornication as is not so much as named amongst the Gentiles that once you have his father's wife puffed up and have not rather mourned. There's the mourning that he's talking about. Now he's joyous that they are finally mourning, that he ha that have done these deeds might be taken away from among you. For I verily as absent in body, but present in spirit. Paul is present in spirit with us today have judged already as though I were present concerning him that have so done this deed. Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, so guess what? His spirit is here with us when we're gathered together. 
Paul is still our apostle. God's a God of the living. Paul is with us today. So is Jesus. To deliver such a one unto Satan. What? For the destruction of the flesh. This is what we're talking about being saved from delivering to Satan for destruction of the flesh. That the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is what he's talking about. It's very evident. He's talking to the Corinthians. This is within context. He's not talking about salvation of the soul. This is of the flesh. See? Now I'll raise your volume so you can talk. I have nothing to say, dude, man. You, you, did, you, you went on and you, you proved your point, dude. All right. All right, I just wanted to make my point clear. So you asked me to address it, so I want to address it. But, yeah, but you just said, you know, that there's nowhere. But you ex you explained it that that I wasn't talking about salvation. Um, so I guess there's a difference between salvation of the spirit and salvation of the flesh. Yes, and I can show you in and, in scripture. And and where where does um where does that get separated at? As far as our flesh being saved and our, because I've never heard of our flesh being saved. No, no, no. Um, well, let me let me show you. So right here. So I mean, Paul talked about the the, the the horrible things that he did and he didn't want to do. So he had a fight within himself, mm -hmm. and he would he he fought his flesh. So. If, if our great apostle had to fight his flesh, then obviously this wasn't talking about salvation of the flesh. Um, he's, so you're there saying... Was a, there was a war going on because Paul talked about, you know, the good that I would do, mm -hmm. I, I do not. Mm -hmm. So obviously there was a struggle going on in Paul, with Paul. Now, was that a struggle going on with his with the spirit Paul or with the fleshly Paul? Oh yeah, with the, definitely with the flesh. Okay, so when you when you just said that this Second Corinthians letter, who Paul is writing to the Corinthians, when they talk about being godly sorry, because there's a certain type of sorrow that we have that would cause us to have a change of mind. Yeah. So and, and in order towards salvation, because I grew up in the church, sat up under, you know, the word for years and, and my heart got a callous towards it because I heard it and I rejected it for years. Uh -huh. But there was something that happened in my life and in that word was in me because I kept hearing the word of God because we, we talk about how does a unsaved person get saved is by a preacher hearing the word of God. Amen. I, I heard I heard the word of God. I turned towards God. Well, no, see, you don't you, you you're saved by faith. I mean, by believing from the heart, not from the knowledge of your head. So it's not changing of mind. Changing of mind won't save you. It's belief. When you hear the gospel and you believe it, you oh, may. It has, to, it has to start in the mind. If we, no, you, because, let, let, because there's a scripture and I am not a Bible scholar, but. It talks about how Satan has blinded the minds of the world that they cannot receive the truth. So if the truth is, is, is not received first in the mind, then why would Satan go so far as to blind the minds of the world that they can't believe the truth? Okay, let's... And now you're going to go to that scripture and we're yeah. going to read the whole thing and then you're going to say thus and so and so, this and that. Okay, but but, but yeah. I, I just well I, well I gotta pull it in scripture because if you're gonna say it, we gotta correct you by scripture. It says. So you want to correct me? Yeah, because if you're saying it wrong, it's not saying that. It's uh -huh. okay. Now what is it saying that Satan oh. has blinded the minds? Okay, let me read it then. Okay, so in for in Second Corinthians four, uh, let me let me show show you in Second Corinthians four three. But if our gospel be hid. 
it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which what? Believe not. So once they chose not to believe, then their minds are blinded. It's not that you are hearing the gospel and you can't understand it. It's once you choose to believe not, their minds are blinded. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Oh, my goodness. You, you just put, can you hear me? I'm listening to you. Okay. You just said the word choose, right? Didn't you just say the word choose? Yes. And so that, that's ability of free will. And with, with a choice, you make a choice in your mind. It starts in your mind. No. First. No, it says from the for you to make a choice. No, in abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You make a choice in your heart it first. It doesn't mean that the vessel that's sitting in the middle of our chest, the heart means the mind, will, and the emotion. No, no, no. That's what the heart means. No, no, when, no. When, when no. the Bible talks about the heart, it's not talking about the, the vessel no. that's pumping. No, through no, our, the scripture our, says, love the Lord thy God with all of your heart, your soul, and your mind. Those are three yes, separate things. Yes. And, and yeah. The mind so, is the mind. I mean, so you saying, so you saying, the heart and the soul and the mind and the spirit are all the same. How, all right. How can I believe God in 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 my in my blood vessel? It's not to, it's not the blood vessel. It's in the heart. When when it, then, then you got to be able to describe. You got to be able to describe what we're. I'm talking trying about to, in, man. In you, we're you, not talking about the literal heart because God. I mean, God. So are you talking about the literal mind? He covers us with his feathers. All right. No, God is not a chicken. It's not literal. Okay, so, so I'm sorry you don't believe the literal road. That's why you're so confused. It is literal. And again, it's not literal. So you're, you're saying that God is a chicken. And I didn't say it. God is a chicken. But that, that's in the Bible. Uh, it and is. God uh, covers us with his feathers. That, that, uh, do chickens are the only ones with feathers? Okay, so God is a giant bird. It, does it say he was a bird? Oh, come on, man. What what has feathers? Do angels have feathers? Do they have wings? But God is God is not an angel. Oh, really? Has he not appeared as the angel of God? Who spoke to oh. Moses? Who spoke to Moses in Mount Sinai? Was not that the angel? God is not a that was the pre-incarnate Jesus. Every anytime we saw anytime we saw an when, angel when Shadrach or, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego Stood against oh, Daniel. Lord, I mean, stood Lord against God, um, Lord stood Lord against King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, there was an angel. It says the Son of God, the angel. I'm sorry. Yeah. So now in Romans ten, yeah, in Romans ten, it says, "For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved." For how then shall they call on him in who they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in who they have not heard? And how should they hear without a preacher? So the process is you hear, and then you hear the preaching, and you believe the preaching, and then you confess. It has nothing to do with the mind. It didn't say you think about it, you understand it. No, you hear from you hear from the heart. So and that's what I said. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Kale, Kale, you, you, what, what do you hear with? You hear with ears? They don't have ears to hear. Did they not actually have ears? Oh my goodness! Really? Yeah. What? 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 What is Hebrews? Yes, really. What does Hebrews four tell us? So, just because you're out there preaching the gospel, everybody that hears the gospel doesn't have to make a decision to believe. They just, if they hear the gospel, they'll believe the gospel and they'll be saved. It says, for the word, faith, right? it says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing sunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner in the thoughts and intents of the mind? No. See, and you it's not talking about the literal heart. When he talks about mind, is he talking about the literal mind? Yes, he is. Oh, but not the little heart. See, well, the problem with you is you you just pick and choose what you want to believe. So when he's talking about the heart, he's talking about the heart. When he's talking about the mind, he's talking about the mind. So when, when you preach, when you give the word of God to someone, you're talking to their heart, not to their mind. 
believes from the heart. Your person believes from that. See, will and emotions. You're not talking to the literal heart because people have had heart transplants. So therefore, when they have a heart transplant, heart, could the believing heart be replaced with the unbelieving heart? That he said, I'll give you a heart of stone. I will replace your heart, heart of stone, I mean, and give you a new heart. Around here with hearts of stone. Yes. That, that, that there is, oh, oh, okay. All right, sir. Mr. Beverly. Uh, he, yes, and he, he will every day. I appreciate that. Thank you. And, and, he, and he blesses me every day. Okay, cool. And I have a clear understanding of the word. All right. Obviously, you do too in your own mind. Understanding in my own mind, but I have an understanding of the word enough uh -huh. to have salvation forever. All right. Well, so I mean, you confess uh, what you know what you're supposed to confess. I hope you truly believe that. I'm still, uh, I'm still concerned. I'm still concerned that you truly believe in believing only and not repentance. So I'm not certain about the believing part and repenting part. But we'll see. We'll see on Judgment Day who's right. Do, do not make judgments of me. You don't even know me. I can give you a testimony. I, 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 that I them that are spiritual, well, them that are spiritual judge of all things, so I am supposed to judge you. And we'll okay. see on Judgment Day. You don't, you don't know me. You're just talking to me. You have an experience. I know your testimony. I'll have to know you. All I have to do is know what you confess of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. So what you say right. from your heart is truly what you believe. And if it's not That's what right. God says, it doesn't line up. And if it doesn't line up with scripture, then I, I judge righteous judgment based off of scripture. All my past sins were forgiven, all my present sins were forgiven, and all my future sins are forgiven. And and how do you receive that salvation? By, by grace and believing in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it, but not by repenting. That wasn't the argument, sir. That was the question, the so it's not by is, repenting. Okay, good. Because the argument is, the, the argument is, sir, that it all started from me being godly sorry for what I had done rejecting him when he was, was reaching out to me for years, rejecting him, rejecting his grace, rejecting his mercy, shaking my fist at him, but, sticking my middle finger. But godly sorrow, finger. we just agreed that that was talking about believers already saved people. I'm talking about me as an un unregenerated, unsaved individual. Well, what scripture says that an unregenerated, unsaved person will will repent to salvation? Those. So your, your point in Romans... Uh, I mean, where was that in Romans? Uh, what was that verse in Second Corinthians? What was that? Second Corinthians seven. You said repentance to salvation. You were saying that that was salvation, and my point was no, that was not eternal salvation. That was of the flesh, just like yeah. Okay, we're going back there, sir. I thought I thought we were past that. No, you keep bringing it up, so I have to I have to correct you with that. So I just wanted to see. Yeah. Yeah, just like in, in First Timothy, just like in First Timothy two fifteen, it says, "Not notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing." Is that is that is that fleshly salvation or eternal salvation? If they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety, so has she been saved by childbearing. Look, look at look at First Timothy two fifteen. You tell me if that's salvation of the soul and. Or is it salvation of the flesh? Okay, now we're talking about death, right? Life and death. Yes, life and death. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about. So you're not talking about eternal life. Work is God repentance, so you won't die. Yes, exactly. Okay, so because the wages of sin is death. You okay. live in sin, you're gonna die. Yes. What, what happens if you don't have godly repentance or godly you die. sorrow that repentance? You die. And you die. Yes. He what said happens? that in First Corinthians, what happens is what he said in First Corinthians five five. This is what happens. Let me take you to the scripture. So if you don't have godly sorrow and mourning to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. 
So the flesh dies, but the spirit is saved. So if you so if you want to save your flesh, then don't then have godly sorrow and quit and mourn the sin in your life and don't live in sin, and you will be saved from the destruction of the flesh. That's what it's talking about. That's in context. Okay, so this was talking about um it is important to call me that there is fornicators among you, and such fornicators is not much named among Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. Oh, it, that was a reference to somebody wanting a father's wife. Having his father's wife. He yeah. they were having sex with the, with his mother or mother in law. That's disgusting. And and the, and but well, he actually, actually it's stepmother. If if it's his father's wife, it'd be stepmother. Well, that's what I said. It could be mother or mother-in-law. It doesn't matter if his father's wife or not. I mean, his, wouldn't his mother be his father's wife? But nonetheless, it's either mother or mother-in-law, I mean, whatever. Thinking, I'm thinking wife. I mean, I'm sorry, not mother-in-law. I'm sorry, stepmother. I mean, I'm sorry, you're right. You're right, stepmother. I said mother-in-law, but you're right. I mean, stepmother, you're right. Stepmother, right. correct. Yes, thanks for correcting okay. me. Yep. But yeah, but it, it was um, sick, whatever it was, and it was fornication. At, right. at that and so what happened he was telling the corinthians and ye are puffed up and have not rather mourn this see mourn that he have done this deed so he's talking to the believers you should have been mourning this godly sorrow is what gives you that mourning see done this deed that that might be taken away from among you this person should be taken away for i verily as absent in body he wasn't there in body but present in spirit, he's still present in spirit today, have judged already. See, we're supposed to judge righteous judgment. That is wrong. And we should we should reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering. As though I were present concerning him, so he's judging this person because they didn't, concerning him that have so done this deed. In the name of our Lord... And according to you, he was talking to somebody who was saved. Yes, according to scripture. You, yes. What do you tell him to do in chapter thirteen with this saved person? In chat, in verse five, he's saying to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction well, what of the flesh. Verse thirteen. What do you tell him to do? But them that are without God judgeth. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Let's talk about right. them that are without God. Huh? So that, that's talking about something completely different than what's earlier in the chapter. Yes. So if you read it all in context, this. Boy, so you mean to tell me that we are. Wow. Yes. We're just given to anything. And, and I guess Romans 12, 1 and 2 does, doesn't mean anything to us, does it? Yeah, of course so it does. Romans 12, 1 and 2 mean anything? Of course it does. And I beseech you, therefore, yeah. brethren, these are believers, he's beseeching right. strongly right. by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Don't fornicate. Holy, acceptable so, unto so God, why, which is why, your why, reasonable and, service, and be not conformed to this world. Believing and that were saved were, I guess they, they, didn't, they didn't know about Romans 12, one is talking about presenting our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of will. God. Amen. I, I guess they, they didn't know that, right? Uh, well, just like Christians today, they obviously don't read the Bible and they don't follow it. And wow. so, yes, it's no different than today. It's right there in front of it. That's why I encourage people, open your Bibles and read it. Read a chapter a day and live yeah, by it. Know, Believe uh, it. Let's go to First uh, Corinthians, I believe it's chapter either 6 or 9. Okay. Yeah, I love this one. So this is what people bring up. It says, "Know ye not that the unrighteous that the unrighteous we're not unrighteous we are righteous that the unrighteous shall not inherit you you can't inherit unless you're a child of once we believe we're sons of God so we inherit 
that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Not deceived. He's telling us to not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor uh, revilers, nor extortioners shall what? Inherit the kingdom of God. He, that's why Jesus told him, unless you are born again, you cannot okay, see the kingdom of God. And such and were some, some of you, but ye are washed. See, such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of God. See, we were those things, but guess what? We are washed, we're sanctified, we're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's why you gotta get the name right. It's not Yahweh, it's not Yeshua, it's not any other name but Jesus, J-E-S-U-S. Well, there's no J in Hebrew. Well, again, there, there, so there's no Jesus in the Old Testament, no, no name Jesus in the Old Testament. The New Testament wasn't written in Hebrew, and it's not about that. It's about Jesus. That's the name that's given among men whereby we must be saved. There's there J in, in Greek. And there is a J in Hebrew. There, Jesus said no jot or tittle. J is well, j jot no, or there's tittle. No, there's no J as far as his names. Yes, it is. Then it wouldn't be called G Jews. It wouldn't be Jerusalem. It wouldn't be justice. It wouldn't we're talking, be. We're talking about the original Hebrew language. Uh, yes, there is a. If you go to if you go to Psalms one nineteen, you'll see the Hebrew alphabet in the Bible, and there is a J. Jesus uh, said, "Jot or tittle." Uh, know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? God forbid. Yep. So when Jesus said in Matthew 5, 18. Then he encourages us to flee fornication and every sin that man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sins against his own body. That's right. But know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, that which is in you? So is the Holy Ghost in the unbeliever? No, he's talking about the believer. He's right. Which yeah. he have of God. So therefore he's exhorting believers. Yes, to repent. Yeah, to repent. Not to be fornicators. Not, not to, to be yes. Not yes. to be abusers, nor effeminate, yes. nor abusers of himself with mankind. Don't be a thief. Yes. Yes. Violence or extortioners. And then he's telling him, if you do such things, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say they will not inherit the So then now you're saying you can lose salvation. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, shall. nor violence, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But right. ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified. So again, so then the jot and tittle. So if you look at if you look at Matthew five eighteen it says, for verily I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass one jot with a j, jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So j is in the Hebrew alphabet. And if you go to if you go to if you go to Psalms one nineteen, you'll see the whole Hebrew alphabet. And Jot is there. So I don't care what man says. I care what the word of God says. J is there. Jesus is his name. And not Yahweh, not any other name. But there's only one name given among men whereby we must be saved. And that's Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. -S. Oh, man, I'm talking to you and I burnt my rights. Hey, I'd rather the rice be burnt than you burnt in, in, in the lake of fire. I'm trying to get you this everlasting truth. So look at look at Psalms. All right, I hope so. I hope so. Psalms 119.73. J-O-D. You're, you're hoping, and I know I won't. I hope. You're hoping that I won't, and I'm telling you, I know that I won't. Well, I like that. Noah's knowledge, and that's what John, John 3 I mean, yeah, First John 5, 13 talks about. Oh, man. I like that. 
I'm not gonna argue with you there. If you know it, I'm not gonna argue that. Thank you, sir. These it's things one, you're not gonna be arguing with me, huh? Yeah, I'm trying not to argue with you, man. I'm just trying to preach. Like I said, that's all I want to do is preach. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, not are gonna get it, you have it, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Unbelievers need to be preached too. We we as believers need to be taught. So you're not preaching to me. You should be teaching me, right? Uh, well, I, I am teaching you, but you do preach. That's what we looked at. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, oh, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. Huh? It doesn't. It's not talking to believers, right? It is talking to believers. Because if you read on, let me show you. Let me show you. Oh my goodness! I don't want to. No, I, I gotta go, man. I gotta. I gotta get this right, man. I'm trying to fix dinner. My wife will be home in a half an hour. No, she'll be home in 15 minutes. Okay. I really gotta fix this right, sir. Well, we'll do it another I'm time, like, man. I appreciate I, talking I with you. Sure my wife has dinner when she gets home. All right, sounds good, man. Well, hey, don't burn up the house. Thanks. Good talking with you. Have a blessed weekend. Hey, you. You caused me to. You caused me to burn my rice, man. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, I'm good. You were paying attention to the word of God. <laughs> All right, man. I'll get off the phone. Have All a right, blessed man. weekend. You. You take care, man. All right. Thanks. All right. All right. Bye bye. All right. I want to bring up this point he was saying. It says. Preach the word, be incident, season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering doctrine, for the time will come when who? They will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. So guess what? The preacher is the teacher. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof thy ministry, for I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. I love his appearing. I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I'm looking for the true Christ, Jesus Christ. So we are supposed to preach to every man and see long suffering and doctrine. So if the person is not giving us is not understanding the right doctrine, we're supposed to we're supposed to uh, expound it to them and, and, and give them the truth. The same way that uh, Aquila and Priscilla, I don't know how to spell. Let's see how that works. Partial match. And one second. All right, here we go. Oh, it's one L. Okay. Now. Same thing that Aquila and Priscilla did to um this believer here in Acts 18. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. See, he didn't know anything further than that. Well, we have to preach to this person and teach this person. And that's what, that's what the believers did. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him what? The way of God more perfectly. See, and that's what we should do. We should take these people aside and speak to them and expound unto them, showing the scripture. The way of God more perfectly. It's not that he didn't know the way of God. It was limited. It was not perfect. It was not completely. See, so he only knew up until John the Baptist. So he was a believer. He was mighty in the scriptures. It wasn't perfect though. He hadn't learned all the way up until this point. And when he was disposed to pass into Acacia, the brethren wrote 
exhorting the disciples to receive him. So now they should receive him because now he knows more perfectly who when he was come helped them much which had believed through grace. See? For he mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. That's why we should preach to a believer because they can go and do the same thing. They can learn and now they can go and continue to preach the true Jesus Christ. So I hope that, uh, you know, I'm sorry for, you know, the yelling back and forth, but I hope that people learn something here. Let me go and check and see who's watching. Someone said, yes, yeah, I can hear. Oh, okay, because I was asking you here. Kel, you don't know what you're doing. So Teddy said, Kel never admits fault. Well, I did admit when I was wrong. He corrected me. I said uh, mother-in-law when it was actually stepmother. So I do admit fault. Just changes the subject. Okay, whatever, Teddy. Cool. All right, well, let me get up out of here. Car's got a basketball game. Last week he scored 12 points at five. He's a bad boy right there, so we're just praying for him. Pray that uh, he stays healthy and continues to do great things in his reading, his math, his ministry, his sports. I mean, Kari, boy, he's going to be a, a great man of God, so a great leader in our community. And Caius is following in his footsteps, so makes a father and mother proud. All right, love you guys. Next time. God bless.